Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, March 19th, 2012. Our top story is a quick update from the world of medicine. At the University of North Carolina, a small human trial has successfully flushed out latent HIV virus. You see, antiretroviral drugs can help control viral levels in someone already infected, but it's not a long-term solution. Viruses can still hide within infected cells, requiring lifelong use of these drugs. To cure someone of HIV completely, the first step is flushing out these hidden viruses. So six HIV-positive men who were stable on medication also took the oncology drug. The virus specifically likes hiding and replicating within a certain type of immune cell. Just hours after taking the drug, the subject showed increased viral RNA in these cells. This is the first time viral latency has been treated directly and has broader implications for viral infections as a whole. And, as we mentioned, this isn't a cure for HIV-AIDS, but is a very important step to finding one. And from the world of neuroscience, researchers from the University of New South Wales have done the largest study on transcranial direct current stimulation for treating depression. TDCS is a non-invasive form of brain stimulation where a weak electric current passes into the brain through electrodes on the scalp. And this is the largest study done using this method. Almost all those in the study had little to no success treating their depression using other methods, which makes these results even more exciting, with some subjects showing improvement after three weeks and even greater improvement after the total six. Out of the successful subjects, 85% had no trace of relapsing depression three months after the trial. Potentially one of the most exciting results of the study was that there was no detected side effects. There were even unexpected benefits like some reporting increased focus and another reporting alleviation of chronic neck pain. Now, before people attempt taping batteries to their forehead, remember this is still experimental and much more study is needed. Finally, from the field of nanotechnology, a team at Tel Aviv University has been developing protein-based transistors. Silicone is the basis for most modern technology, but with certain limitations that are becoming more prevalent. Organic materials such as proteins have advantages like their general ability to self-assemble. Another advantage is in miniaturization. Blood protein-based films were 4 nanometers thick, whereas conventional technology uses transistors about 18 nanometers thick. The selection of proteins may seem a bit odd, but each has properties making them well-suited for this application, like blood protein's ability to absorb oxygen. Milk proteins actually form fibers which become the basis of the transistor, and the mucus proteins allow for separate containment of various fluorescent dyes. Ultimately, the goal is to move away from brittle silicone to flexible, smaller, and even biodegradable electronic devices. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.